Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how I set up my CPU mining rigs. I'm going to show you these nice uh, 3D printed uh, vertical motherboard stands, uh, how to mount the uh, CPU cooler, a uh, small intro, intro into uh, where you should connect the memory sticks, uh, and also how I power up my rigs with a special nice splitter and in the end we're going to jump into HiveOS and see how it's all working now stick around and we're just going to check out the new splitter cables here you have the power cable splitter unpacked you have five c13 and one c14 input and the nice thing with this is that you can power up several power supplies on one cable but you have to make sure uh, that the cable you connect to power can uh, drive enough power into all those five uh, splitters so make sure that you check up the technical specs before you use it so you don't heat up the cable here we have the 3D printed motherboard stands. Now, in a little bit, I'm going to show you why these are designed this way. These are specifically made for CPU mining. When you, I, I found the design on Thingsverse. Uh, and most of the designs are the other way around. But these are made for s CPU mining. And I'm going to show you why in a little bit. Now we're back at my still image of the uh, of my motherboard stands. Um, I didn't want to make a video where I go back and forth with the video on hand. Uh, that's why I show you this still image to so I can use the mouse to point more accurate on the things I want to explain for you. Uh, these are two different uh, vertical stands. One is designed where the screw holes are aligned vertical above each other. The second one is on the top as the same as the first one there, but the, the bottom one uh, is designed a little bit more in, like an L. The reason for this is because uh, the screw holes on this side of the motherboard, where you have all your inputs for USB and uh, audio and things, those things of connections, uh, that's because the screw hole is behind, uh, or on the left side and behind this uh, uh, setup. And, uh, the, and also, the, when you mount the motherboard like this onto these vertical stands, uh, you also get the CPU coolers uh, in the lower uh, side of the motherboard. Uh, if I had just normal vertical stands, most likely the CPU would be on the top here. And when you mount it on the top or have the motherboard turn the way so the CPU uh, cooler gets in the top, you will have more pressure on the on the on the um, motherboard. And also, I'm not quite sure how good it will be. Uh, if it could bend back, that's why I wanted vertical stands uh, designed like this. And uh, also, when it's uh, when the CPU cooler is mounted down here or the motherboard it's turned this way, you have more support. It's it's more stable. This uh, when it's uh, uh, at, mounted this uh, way. Now. Uh, let's take a closer look at the CPU cooler in the next clip and see how you uh, mount them to your motherboard. Here we have two new AMD Wrap Prism air coolers, uh, some memory sticks and thermal paste. Now let's unbox the air coolers and let's connect it to two of my rigs. Here we have the Wrap Prism air cooler unpacked. Uh, as you can see below here on the bottom there are already some thermal paste we're going to add some more over here uh, and then we're going to install memory sticks on that uh, that motherboard and 
uh, another air cooler. <clears throat> so let's see how much uh, thermal paste I add on my CPU. Now I don't add too much because you don't want it to float around and uh, on the outside of the CPU. Now, This, I think, is a very nice add-on. Uh, some people use a special tool to to make this float around or adjust it more around. Uh, I don't do that, especially since the a new air cooler already had some thermal paste on it. So now I'm just going to attach the air cooler. I'm going to show you the way I attach it after. The air cooler is now attached and uh, I always start on this side without the uh, handle and then I fix it with the handle. I also have the cape CPU fan cable uh, turned the right side of where the connect connector is. As you can see, this is on the left side. Now when you're going to install memory, especially for CPU mining, it's very important that you add the memories in dual channel slots. As you can see here, you have DIM A, DIM A2 with a star on the right side, DIM B1, and DIM B2 with a star on the right side. If you just have one memory slot, you put this normally in DIM A2. If you have two, you put it in DIM A2 and DIM B2. Now this can vary from, uh, from uh, different manufacturers or motherboards, so it's very important that you read the instruction manual. So now we're going to attach another cooler, the memory card, the memory sticks, and then we're going to uh, set it up and uh, run it on the rig setup. Okay guys, as you can see now, we are up and running on four of my rigs, my CPU rigs. Uh, they are mounted on these new vertical 3D printed motherboard stands. And the power the PSUs I have down here. Now these are four power supplies, three uh, 500 watt PSU and one 650 watt PSU. Now they are all connected to this splitter that again are connected over here. And all the cables are coming up in behind and they're connected to the motherboards behind the air coolers. And as you can see, there are the CPU connector. Now this is how these ones are connected. On the next one, I'm going to try to do something else. I want to see if I can use uh, one server supply, a power supply like this, and connect it with splitters and etc. So we will see, but at, at, at the moment, this is how I'm setting it up now. And also I have the, uh, power switch button connected for each rig and uh, fasten it to the um, vertical motherboard stands. Now let's go in HiveOS and see if uh, my uh, how the temperatures are and uh, how the CPU rigs are doing. Now we're in HiveOS and as you can see I have four of five CPU rigs up and running. Now the last one is not finished yet, that's why it's not online. Uh, the two ones we just installed are these two. And as you can see, I have a little more, little less hash rate than uh, the other two on the top. The reason for this is because I haven't done any overclocking settings or voltage settings in the BIOS. So that's, only the, that's the only reason why the hash rate is a uh, little less than the two other ones. Now... This one is the one that is finished, uh, both of them are finished, but this one is the one that we did the testing with uh, in my earlier video. And if you go in here, uh, you can see that the temperature here is still 64 degrees. Now this is a very good temperature, it's stable, it's no problem. And uh, I'm running it on a ROG Strix B450F Gaming 2 Asus motherboard. Uh, it has uh, 16 gigabyte RAM. Uh, two eight gigabyte sticks on dual channel and it's stable and uh, it have the air coolers 
and uh, as you can see uh, you don't need expensive water coolers to to heat down your CPU when you're CPU mining. On the other hand, if you are working with video production or gaming, then you need most likely a water cooler. And that's because the CPU is working in a different way rather than when it's mining. So I'm not going to go into the details now, but uh, uh, this is how it is, and it's a very good setup. It's stable and it's nice. Uh, <coughs> Before we round up this video, I just want to inform you that I'm working on a on a test video uh, for AMD Ryzen 9 5950X CPU. Uh, I haven't quite finished it yet. That's because I have bumped into some problems regarding the memory. I'm not quite sure what is the problem, uh, I'm working on it and as soon as I have fixed or figured out what the issue is, I will launch a new test video. Uh, just like the video I did on the Ryzen 9 3900X. So if you would like to get notification when this video is coming out, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a nice day.